I'll be very brief. Um, I do want to thank Liz Finkelman and the team. Uh, she's done a fabulous job. And then my co-chairs, John, Ruth, and uh, Brett, uh, and the steering committee and all of you for pulling this together. You know, when we started this journey, you saw on my slide earlier that we want to do the right thing for the nation. We feel that the National Academy has a unique position being able to bring people together. We're encouraged by others to say, indeed, while there's a thousand legislations and a thousand activities, there's really no common place, to my knowledge, where all of us can discuss how to work together moving things forward. And the work streams that were identified were your work streams. Those who were part of the initial 50, 60 organizations, plus survey, people say, well, uniquely, these are the gaps. You know, we don't have a good conversation about education, and it's fragmented, it's all over the place, how to bring it together. And as Richard Frank said, accreditation, licensure, things like that, to begin to look at where we can put some serious matter behind it. Now, do I think we can do it in two years? Not really. You know how complicated it is to enable those changes in medical schools, residency. But we will start the journey. And certainly, once we got the key stakeholders together, AAMC, ACGME, you know, CCME, uh, you know, everybody, I would hope they will continue this journey until it's, you know, get to where we can make a difference. The same goes for the other ideas, prescription guidelines. I mean, I hear very clearly that that's not the end or be or particularly focus only on opioid. No question. But I think the nation still needs some guidance. I'm a practitioner some time ago, but I imagine myself as a practitioner. I still want to know, can someone give me some guidelines? Now, I recognize the and we find out how the study goes. We're doing a study, consensus study, on this issue right now in National Academy, looking for evidence. I won't be surprised there's not a lot of evidence on a lot of things. So recognizing the lack of, maybe it's equally important to say we need more research on those areas, or that we have sufficient information, evidence, to have some opinion to guide the average practitioner to move forward. As a practitioner, I say that would be helpful to me, right? So I think there's a good reason for doing this, and it's not going to solve all the problem, but it certainly will get us started in the right direction. And of course, treatment prevention, uh, recovery, such an important area. And by the way, tapering has been pointed out. You know, there's so little guidance on this. I think it's only going to be helpful, no matter what we do, to begin a journey which is a dynamic activity that needs to be adjusted as more evidence come in. But it helps the nation's millions of providers, you know, what can they do in this and not really working in the dark or whatever. And of course, in the area of prevention, treatment, recovery, there's so much work to be done. And I commend the group for highlighting those areas. The high vulnerable risk population, a great start and looking at others, including, of course, stigma as part of this. And I thought that the judge and uh, uh, really made some very important points about the uh, criminal justice system, that we should think a little bit more deeper about what we can do in that field. And ultimately, I think research, metrics, data, as been said, uh, you can't improve what you can't measure. So clearly, we need all those things. And I believe that people are suggesting move a little faster. Don't wait till everything comes in at the very end. I think it's been a really great discussion. Richard Frank highlighted how tough this issue is. And throughout this whole uh, meeting, we said, this is complex. And I tell you, there are times when I'm discouraged and times I'm highly encouraged. I'm discouraged because of where we are today. We all recognize this is a big, societal problem. It's a problem of our social systems. It's a problem with our society. And of course, it's all a problem of failure of our system itself, the health system. 
I'm encouraged because I see all of you here. Richard said to me, he says, you know, you got all the right people here. I don't work in this field, but I'm so encouraged that you guys are willing to spend two days with us and being able to put your best mind forward because we all want to try to fix the problem. And so I think as we begin going starting with a crisis mode, we are looking at long-term system fixes, sustainable system. And uh, I think the emphasis on patient is something that's so important that was brought out by a number of speakers. So what do we do next? Uh, you have given us a huge amount of food for thought, us meaning the people who are actually leading the collaborative the steering committee and the work streams. They are going to spend more time this afternoon bringing back all the information, ideas that you have, and try to help us saying how do we move forward. This was a very important first meeting because we needed that kind of input from all of you, from experts, from public, and you name it, because through this, we can do better. Our question is going to be, how can we deliver some, within two years, something that's tangible that we can say we made a difference? All of us will believe more, and we want to do more, and how do we also frame the idea going forward, whereby the 100, 200 networks and all of the government and the private sector begin to say, oh yeah, we're going to continue this journey. So um, I've always said that uh, you know, for us in National Academy, we really want to make a difference. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to do so. Thank you.